Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on something a little bit different than usual. This is a Southern Pacific cab forward locomotive by River Rossi. I found this locomotive at Trains and Such, a train store in Calgary, Alberta, for 75 Canadian dollars, which I thought was a pretty good deal. The only catch is that this engine apparently doesn't run whatsoever, so I have no idea what's wrong with it. But we're going to try to get it going again today. I've never uh, worked on an engine this large before, and it's got a lot of moving parts, and River Rossi engines in general tend to be a bit fickle, so I'm not 100% sure how well this is going to go, but we're going to give it a shot, and if we're lucky, we got a really unique engine running once again. Now, let's take it over the track. We'll see if we can diagnose whatever the problem is, because I actually haven't tested this engine for myself yet, and uh, then we'll just go from there. Anyway, let's get started. Well, here's the moment of truth, folks. I've got it all set up on the track. I decided to do that off camera just because it takes a while to get uh, all the different sets of wheels on. But in any case, what will it reveal? Oh. Well, it's not picking up power, but watch this. When I jiggle it around, we've got high current draw, which means that there seems to be a short circuit. Now, I've got one spot where I think that might be a tender. See, the thing is, sometimes these tenders can get twisted around, but uh, just looking at this one, all the wheels look to be on the correct side, so I don't think that's the problem, unless they all got rotated. I'm gonna grab a wire and we'll see if we can get the engine moving without the tender. So I've got 12 volts in the track. We'll see if this does anything. Nothing. It's possible it's the other rail that it picks up from, so we'll try that. And I'm seeing sparks, and I can hear the uh, controller shorting, so... Seems this engine has a short circuit for some reason. I have no idea where that would be, but uh, let's go hunting for it. Well, we'll have a look here. So far, all the wheels look to be in order. Just want to make sure there isn't one that's maybe picking up power on the wrong side. Yeah, that all seems to be good. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll just start to disassembling it and see if we can locate wherever this short circuit happens to be. Well, it's now some time later, and I'm still trying to figure out how exactly to uh, get inside the shell of this locomotive. I do see that there is a screw right there and a screw right there, but I noticed that uh, if you kind of squeeze this in, it seems to be almost clipped. So I feel like there's a screw hidden somewhere up here. On a big boy locomotive, I believe I've seen a uh, screw hidden under this cap before, but in this case, it looks perfectly sealed, so I don't think this is a removable part. However, uh, this might be, so I'm going to try to see if I can take this off, and hopefully there is a screw under it. I really hope I'm not making a mistake doing this. Ha! All right, now we're getting somewhere. Hmm. I'm not thinking that there's still another screw or something holding this whole thing together. As, uh, removing that did not seem to make... A whole lot of a difference, really. Well, I've been looking over this thing for a while, and I'm pretty stumped, if I'm honest. I can uh, kind of move this around, and uh, it seems good, but it's, it's like it's anchored somewhere around uh, this area, so I'm thinking there's a screw somewhere under these sets of wheels, which I have to remove. I was really hoping that that wasn't the case because uh, I have a feeling trying to get the, these uh, these wheel sets back together is not going to be fun, but eh, sometimes that's the way it goes. kind of thinking that maybe you have to take this apart in order to rotate that truck just enough to actually access that presumably recessed screw. I'm really hoping that we find something because otherwise I've just taken apart everything here for no reason, but... That's a chance you gotta take sometimes, especially since uh, I really don't want to put too much pressure on the shell. I mean, maybe there's a clip or something holding this on, but uh, brute force should always be a last resort, because uh, I find if you uh, use it too soon, 
You usually end up breaking something, and that's never any fun. What the heck? I'll be darned. I, I, I can't even see what's what exactly that is. Is it a screw? Well, after a good long while of trying to figure out how this shell comes off, I think I finally figured it out. Wouldn't you know it, this is actually not a molded part of the shell. So if we remove that, you can see there's a small screw down there. And uh, hopefully if we take this out, the whole shell will pop off and we'll be able to actually start trying to figure out what's causing this thing to short. All right, we finally done it. We are finally uh, inside the drive. Now, maybe we can hook some leads directly onto the motor here and see if we can get this thing to turn over. And what do you think, will she start? Nope, totally shorted, weird. So I have a theory as to what the problem might be. Now, if we look over here, you can see uh, the wire, which uh, we just looked at hooks up right here. This is all plastic, so I don't think that there's a short there. But if we follow the wire, connects to the motor right here, all the connections look okay. But then down here, I think it connects to this piece of metal, which is likely opposite from the ground. And uh, if that's the case, those should not be touching. So if we hold this up, try giving the motor some power now, maybe it will start. Oh, there's a light fixture down there. I didn't even notice that. I don't kind of think there's something shorted here. It's not the first time I've seen that happen on a River Rossi locomotive. Well, that all looks pretty clean, but I am still quite suspicious that maybe there's a short circuit between this piece of metal and the frame. Let's see here now. Well, the motor seems fine, but I don't know. Oh, look at that. That was, I think, an insulator between these two pieces of metal. So maybe something happened, like somebody dropped this engine broke the insulator and it shorted the whole locomotive out. I'm kind of thinking that that's what happened all along. So really, all we have to do is replace whatever that insulator was and it will come right back to life, who knows? Now, of course, there was a screw inside here earlier, so maybe I should just put that back because I don't think it had anything to do whatsoever with holding the shell on, so that should be okay. Well, I'm pretty confident at this point we've solved the shorting issue, but uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the motor's condition. So I'm just going to uh, take it off the whole drive here and I'll just service it, you know, oil the bearings, clean the commutator, and hopefully that will solve whatever the issues with it are because it does start. It's just the torque is very, very low. It could also relate to the drive, which I intend to service as well. But, uh, you know, these motors, if they have a lot of hours on them, there will be some issues usually with the commutator. Yeah, that could probably use some cleaning too, honestly. Hmm. 
Hmm. That is a, a very clean motor. I'm surprised to see that. Huh, all seems okay. How's the drive turning? Yeah, that I'm a little less sure about, so I guess we'll crack that open too. Yeah, I don't know, I could all use a little cleaning. That crappy uh, old lubricant out of there. I can put in this nice fresh stuff. I'll just bring this thing over to the track and just quickly make sure that uh, everything's working properly before we uh, seal all of this up. All right, let's all hope for the best here. Well, I'll be darned. I wonder what's causing that. This thing is so confusing. Well, I believe after some searching, I finally found the source of the short. I have no doubt that there was a short circuit here, but up front, there's this little screw uh, which holds on uh, this truck right here, and it sticks out just far enough to make contact with this piece right here. So, if we put some power in the track, you can see we got a short circuit, but if we go ahead and lift this up, she starts running. So... I just need to figure out why that screw is sticking out so far, and hopefully the whole thing will work. So the thing about working on uh, any locomotive is you can never trust that everything hasn't already been messed up before. Like, I highly doubt it came from the factory like this. Or if it did, that's a very big uh, design flaw these engines had. But uh, I'm more sp suspicious that somebody played around with it a little bit and mess something up because there's some other screws in here which do not look original so there is a reason for for concern there I could just put a bit of an electrical tape on here and it, it might just fix the problem, you know?
Well, I'd reckon at this point we can put the shell back on because all the other stuff we can access from the outside. So we'll get this thing back together and then we'll go from there. Well, I've got the whole engine back together. I think there's only one thing to do now. Let's take it over to the track and see if it runs or not. All right, folks, everyone cross your fingers. I really hope this thing starts. Yeah, right on. That's not half bad. Yeah, it's coming back. Current draw is a little high, but it's doing it. You know what, I think this thing is fine. It's not even stuttering. Seems a little rough, it's kind of rocking a little bit, but uh, overall this isn't bad. The only thing is, you know, current draw is a little higher than I'd like, but I'll let it go around a few laps and maybe if it breaks in, it will uh, sort itself out a little. Well, it's about 15 minutes later and other than stopping the engine for a few minutes to clean the wheels and oil the drivers, it's been running solid for 10 minutes straight, so I am absolutely thrilled about that. Also, the current draw has dropped a little bit. Not a significant amount, but it's definitely closer to the range I want it to be at. So, yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this thing, you know? Through a bit of troubleshooting, we were able to get it going again, and uh, here it is uh, flying around the layout for the first time in maybe years. And uh, certainly can't complain for the price point. Certainly... Uh, could use just a little bit of fine tuning maybe to smooth it out a little more uh, but that can all be done later i also uh, somehow lost the handrails so i'll have to find those at some point i've looked around already but i'm sure they'll turn up eventually so yeah there's a little bit of room for improvement but overall i'm uh, i'm very pleased with this project and you know it's kind of special too to have a cab ford in the collection these are not terribly common locomotives so it's, it's nice to add something unique to the collection, and I certainly learned a lot about uh, how to open these engines up. So if I want to uh, do something similar with uh, both of my big boy locomotives, it should be a lot easier now. So that is all good. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed, and with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.